Uh, bring it on is the time where literally you can email in and ask Pat any question. And we're going to start with Jane. Jane writes in and she says, is living with a member of the opposite sex wrong? I realize this type of living situation increases the temptation, but my boyfriend and I have determined to be strong and not have sex. Do you think it's okay for the opposite sex to live together? Uh, Jane, uh, is it okay to take a candle and, and pass it over a barrel of dynamite? I mean, is, is it wrong? Well, it's kind of foolish because the thing <laughs> might blow up in your face. Um, it's very hard mm -hmm. to live in the same uh, house with somebody that you're very much attracted to without sooner or later, you know, consummating that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. If you're going to live together, for heaven's sakes, get married. What's the deal? I, I don't understand it. Uh, but is it wrong? Uh, you know, theoretically, not wrong, but it's 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 not good. And you know, the the Bible says, uh, you know, avoid every appearance of evil. You know, every form of evil. And and it just seems like that that is not a good thing to do. But if you're that drawn to one another, go get married. What's nice? That's true. I think one of the number one challenges we as Christians have is we think that we're so strong that they're, we're not vulnerable to those temptations. And I tell you, the more I grow in Christ, the weaker I feel oh, <laughs> sometimes. Honey, I am told and I have read, and yeah. I'm not sure this is true, yeah. but it was reported that um, Mahatma Gandhi, in order to stay strong, uh, had a had a woman, a young girl, that would sleep in the bed with him so that he would resist temptation. Not a good idea. Uh, not a good and idea. Most people are not an ascetic like Gandhi mm -hmm. was, but nevertheless, don't do it. Exactly. All right. Dear Pat, I am confused about what the Bible means when it says I need to confess my sins with my mouth. How do I do that? Well, the Bible, I, I, I think I, I read, read that, and I don't think that's exactly what it says. It... it uh, uh, it says you're to confess your faith, you know, with your mouth. A confession is made unto salvation. And you confess not your sins. You confess, I believe in Jesus. Hmm. And you need to get it out of yourself because when you verbalize it, you form that concept. It takes it out of your inner being and gets it outside of you. But I'm not sure there's anything in the Bible that says uh, you're supposed to confess your sins with your mouth. I think you've misread the Bible on that one. Yeah. Somebody else might write in and say, oh, hey, you're wrong. But I, that's to the best of my knowledge. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's another one. It says, Jesus said, if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Does this mean that if I pray by myself, my prayers are less powerful? Uh, the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much, mm -hmm. is what the Bible says. So, of course, your prayers are answered we're a communal religion. Christianity is a communal religion. And uh, where two of you agree together, uh, it, it brings about a bond. But the agreement, the main agreement has got to be with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God agrees with your spirit. And you, then you confess that agreement. But uh, I won't go into great detail, but you, your prayers are perfectly okay by yourself. <laughs> but when you join with somebody else, uh, it, 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 it magnifies the experience. Right. And you know what sometimes I think too, mm. is that when they're, if I'm believing on something and I'm praying and maybe I'm weak in faith for a yeah. certain thing, you have another person who can kind of stand in there for me and intercede oh, yeah. for me when I'm weak. Yeah. So that could be part of it too. All right. Well, Renee uh, writes and says, Pat, you have such a solid walk with Christ over the years. Are there any Christian, Christian classics that God has used to influence your Christian life? Oh, uh, the revival lectures by Charles Finney, hmm. uh, John Wesley's journal, and I had a whole, I have a whole selection of the uh, letters of Wesley. Uh, there are other uh, books of that nature that, that are uh, very uh, uh, informative for the, the biography of some of the, the great saints. But I, I think you look at Wesley and you look at Finney, you, you've got a couple of the real great ones. What is it about them that makes them so significant and profound well, to you? I mean, they walked with God. They had the power of God. They had a life of overcoming faith, and they, they had a, a real experience with the Lord. But Finney uh, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, and he was a great teacher, and he had the anointing of the Lord as he evangelized. So his, uh, he had what were called revival lectures. Mm -hmm. And so he's teaching people how to experience revival. That's what hmm. makes him good. And with, with Wesley, I mean, what a life. It just is thrilling to see what he had to say and uh, uh, his journal and also his letters. And that, that's for starters. There are many others.